Welcome to Stellar Insights. Today we'll be taking a deep dive into uh, a question that might have crossed your mind while watching uh, you know, footage of the Apollo missions. Why did the Lunar Excursion Module, or LEM, need two stages? Um, it seems counterintuitive at first, right? More right. parts, more complexity, more things to go wrong. Yeah, you'd think so, right? But as we'll see, that two-stage design was a stroke of genius. It really made those moon landings possible. Okay. So let's start by um, unpacking exactly what we mean by two stages, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine the LEM as like a space-age detachable RV, you know. I like that analogy, a space RV. The bottom part, the descent stage, was the real workhorse. Uh, it got the LEM whim from lunar orbit down to the surface, housed the landing gear, stored all the equipment they needed for exploring the moon, and even acted as the launch pad for the uh, top part. Right. And that top part, the ascent stage, that was the astronauts' ride home. Think of it as like a compact, high-tech capsule. Contained the crew cabin, life support, control systems, and that all-important engine to blast them back up into lunar orbit. So why go through all the trouble of this, this two-part system? Well, one of the biggest reasons was weight. Every pound you launch into space requires a massive amount of fuel. Oh, absolutely. And by leaving that descent stage behind on the moon, the ascent stage became significantly lighter, meant it needed way less fuel for the return trip. We're talking about something like a 70% reduction in mass. 70%? That's huge. It is. That's like ditching a full-size SUV and, I don't know, zipping around in a little uh, sporty coupe. Much more efficient. I like that. To give you a sense of scale, that 70% reduction, that translated to thousands of pounds of fuel saved. Thousands. Fuel efficiency was absolutely critical. Think about it. It meant more room for scientific equipment, more of those precious lunar samples to bring back home. And of course, that lighter ascent stage, well, it made it much easier to maneuver, you know, to precisely dock with the command and service module, the CSM, that was orbiting the moon. Oh, for sure. That docking maneuver, it was incredibly delicate. Imagine trying to perfectly align two spacecraft while they're both traveling at thousands of miles per hour in lunar orbit. You need all the help you can get. That reduced mass from the two-stage design, well, it made the pilot's job much easier and safer. Right. But, you know, the two-stage design, it wasn't just about efficiency. It was also about specialization, right? You had the descent stage. It was built like a lunar landing expert. Exactly. You had that robust structure, landing legs designed to handle the shock of touchdown on the surface. Then you had this powerful descent engine capable of slowing the LEM down from orbit, allowing for that, you know, controlled landing. So very specialized. And then you had the ascent stage. It was streamlined. It's single purpose. Mm -hmm. Get those astronauts safely back to lunar orbit. Didn't need that heavy landing gear. Didn't need the big descent engine. That made it much lighter, much more efficient for its specific job. And we can't forget, you know, the Apollo missions, they were venturing into the unknown. This two-stage design, it gave them a crucial safety net. Oh, absolutely. If something went wrong during the descent, well, the astronauts, they could just use that ascent stage to abort the landing, head back up to the CSM orbiting above. Right, right. When you're hundreds of thousands of miles from home, that backup option, it was essential. Peace of mind for everyone. A lifesaver. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, the two-stage design wasn't just about, you know, getting to the moon and back. It was adaptable, forward thinking. Yeah, there are some really cool early concepts, you know, modifying the LEM for all sorts of purposes beyond those initial landings. Oh, I remember reading about some of those. There was that one, the, uh, the LM truck, I think it was called. The LM truck, yeah. Basically, a modified LEM designed to deliver cargo to the lunar surface. Yeah. It would use the descent stage as, like... Uh, a platform carrying big payloads. Like a lunar delivery truck, right. right? Bringing supplies, equipment, maybe even rovers, all the stuff you'd need to support people on the moon for a while. A sustained presence. Pretty amazing to think about. They were already thinking ahead to that, even back then. Oh, yeah. The LM truck was just one example. There were even ideas for a lunar base module, something that could support longer stays on the surface. So instead of just planting a flag and coming home, it was about establishing a real foothold on the moon. Exactly. Laying the groundwork for future exploration, scientific discovery, and the LEM's design had the potential to make all that possible. But even developing the LEM itself, that was a whole journey filled with challenges, innovations. I bet. 
those initial designs, didn't they go through like tons of iterations? Oh, yeah, they did. It started as this um, cone-shaped cabin. Then they got inspired by helicopter cockpits, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Big curved windows, seats so the astronauts could see better during landing. Really cool stuff. But then the focus shifted. To weight savings. Yeah, weight savings and safety. Those became the top priorities. I remember reading about some of the changes they made. Pretty drastic stuff. Oh, yeah. They got rid of those heavy cockpit windows, the seats, mm -hmm. implemented this uh, cable and pulley system so the astronauts could stand during those lunar surface operations. And they replaced those big windows with smaller triangular ones. All to save weight. Every ounce mattered. And those changes, they made the spacecraft lighter, more efficient, more reliable. Really incredible. So by when did they finally settle on a design? Well, by April 1963, they had the LEMS configuration finalized. And what they came up with, well, it was like nothing anyone had ever seen before. A real testament to those engineers, they had to work within these incredibly tight constraints, creating a spacecraft that could land on the moon and return safely. Just amazing. Talk about pushing the limits. So once they had the design, how did they actually get this thing to the moon? Well, it was a whole choreographed sequence. At launch, the LEM was tucked away inside the spacecraft to LM adapter, that's SLA. It stayed there through Earth's parking orbit, even through the translunar injection burn that sent the Apollo spacecraft toward the moon. So the LEM was basically just along for the ride for that first part of the journey. Pretty much. But then after that translunar injection, things got interesting. The CSM separated from the rest of the spacecraft, turned around, docked with the LEM, and pulled it out of the SIVB stage of the Saturn V. That's the third stage of the Saturn V, right? Yep, that's the one. And then during the flight to the moon, the LEM pilot, they would power up the LEM systems, test everything, except for propulsion, of course. So the LEM pilot was basically acting as an engineer, making sure both spacecraft were ready to go. Exactly. A really critical role, making sure everything was in perfect working order before they even attempted that lunar landing. I bet that was a nerve-wracking job. So then once they reached lunar orbit, that's when things got... I imagine, really intense. Oh, yeah. The commander and the LEM pilot, they entered the module, powered up all the sound domes, unfolded and locked the landing legs, and finally separated from the CSM. That must have been an incredible feeling. I can only imagine. And then came the descent to the lunar surface, a very delicate maneuver. It took precise coordination between the commander, who controlled the spacecraft's attitude, and the lunar module pilot, who managed the other systems, provided navigational information. Talk about teamwork. They had to be completely in sync. Because landing on the moon, it's not easy. That lunar surface, it's covered in craters, boulders. The LM had to be guided to a safe landing spot very carefully. The commander was constantly adjusting the spacecraft's trajectory with the descent engine, while the pilot was monitoring altitude, descent rate, just an incredible feat of skill and training. It really makes you appreciate the the immense challenges they faced. And yet they managed to touch down on the lunar surface time and time again, successfully. It really is remarkable. The LEMS two-stage design, it was more than just, you know, a clever engineering solution. Mm -hmm. It was the key. It unlocked the door to lunar exploration for us. I completely agree. Separating those functions, the descent and the ascent, well, the engineers created a spacecraft that was efficient, versatile, really remarkable what they achieved. It speaks to their ingenuity, their problem solving. They had yeah. to think outside the box. It shows that sometimes the best way to tackle a complex problem is to, you know, break it down into smaller, more manageable pieces, focus on the specific needs of each stage. And that's how they created a spacecraft that was, you know, optimized for both those challenges, mm -hmm. landing on the moon. Mm -hmm. and then that return to lunar orbit. And you know what's fascinating? The LM's legacy, it goes way beyond Apollo. Oh, absolutely. Those principles, efficiency, adaptability, specialization, they're still influencing how we design spacecraft today. Even as we set our sights on more ambitious goals like, you know, Mars. Think about it. The lessons we learn from the LEMS development, they're invaluable as we plan these future missions, the ones that are going to push those boundaries of space exploration even further. It's incredible to think about. So ultimately, the story of the Loner Excursion Module, it's a story about us, about human ingenuity, about what we can achieve when we, you know, when we dare to dream big, push the limits of what we think is possible. It's inspiring, isn't it, for anyone who's working to you know, unravel those mysteries of the cosmos, engineers, scientists, future generations. Absolutely. The lem it wasn't just about, you know, getting to the moon. It was about doing it the right way, yeah. efficiently, safely. 
so that we could keep exploring, keep pushing further, maybe even establish a permanent presence beyond Earth someday. A true testament to the, the spirit of innovation and to the dedication of all those people who work tirelessly to, to make Apollo a reality. So next time you see that image, you know, that Lem standing on the lunar surface. Remember the ingenuity, the teamwork, the collaboration that made it happen? It symbolizes human achievement, reminds us that we're capable of extraordinary things. As long as we set our minds to it, we really can achieve anything. And the Lem story, it reminds us that exploration, that pursuit of knowledge, it's a journey, it doesn't really have an end. There are always going to be new frontiers to discover, new challenges, new wonders to, to uncover. And that's what makes it so captivating trying to understand where we fit in, you know, in this vast universe yeah. and to keep pushing the boundaries. Exactly. So until our next deep dive, keep looking up and never stop questioning.